Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be doing a deep dive into a paper Ooh, exciting. called Magic Quill, Precise Image Editing with Diffusion Models and In-Context Learning. Catchy title. It is catchy, yeah. Um, it comes to us from a collaboration between folks at HKUST and Ant Group. Sounds promising already. And basically it's all about... Uh, and image editing. Image editing, yeah. I was going to say, that's kind of a hot topic right now with all this AI stuff going on. It is, and it seems like every week there's like a new... A new tool. A new tool, a yeah. new model, a new something. And so this one caught our eye because... You know, it uses brush strokes. Yeah. It's so cool. I know. It's like like you're painting. Right. Like we're going old school, but also very new school at the same time. Yeah. So it's basically this image editing system where you can use brush strokes to guide the AI in making changes to your pictures. Like man, you're actually painting on the image to tell it what to do. Yeah, like adding a flower to a photo or uh -huh. changing someone's clothes. Exactly, things that are usually a pain to do with existing tools. Okay. And there's this whole other layer where the AI actually tries to guess what you're trying to do based on your brush strokes. Like it can suggest text prompts on the fly. I love that. Like it's learning as you're working, almost like a real time collaboration. Right like having this AI art buddy who can anticipate your next move. This is exciting. Tell me more. <laughs> so let's bring in our expert. What's the big deal with Magic Quill? What problem are they trying to solve here? Well, you know, even with all the AI advancements we've seen, mm -hmm. image editing is still pretty... Clunky. Yeah. It can be so clunky sometimes. Especially if you want to make, like, really specific... So nuanced changes. Yeah. yeah. Like, imagine you're trying to... Add, like, a specific kind of flower to a bouquet. Exactly. Or, oh. like, you want to swap out someone's shirt for a jacket with a custom design. Oh, yeah. That kind of stuff can be a nightmare. With traditional tools, you're messing with layers and masks and selections, and it's oh. it's a lot. And even some of the AI tools out there, they're still not quite there when it comes to that level of precision. Okay, so that's where Magic Quill comes in. Yes. And they've really thought about this whole process. They've broken it down into three main components. I'll be with them. Okay. So first you've got the editing processor. Mm -hmm. This is kind of the brains of the operation. It's the AI engine that actually generates those edits based on your input. So this is where the diffusion model is doing its magic. Exactly. But what sets this apart is how precise it is. It gives you really fine-grained control over both the shape oh, I... and the color of your edits. So no more trying to feather those edges perfectly or no, no. painstakingly selecting every little detail. It's all about giving you the control you need to make those precise edits. I like it. What about the guessing part? Where does that fit in? That's all thanks to the second component. Okay. The painting assister. Painting assister. I know it's a cool name. It is. So this is where they're using an MLM. Multimodal large language model. You got it. For anyone who's not familiar with the lingo. Yeah, always got to decode the acronyms. Right. right. So this MLLM, it's basically watching your every brush stroke. Oh, wow. And trying to predict what you're aiming for. Are you adding something, removing something, changing the color? Like it's reading your mind. Almost. And then based on what it thinks you're doing, it suggests relevant text prompts to feed into that editing processor. So it's like a two-way street. You're giving it visual input mm -hmm. and it's giving you language back. Yeah to guide the process. Exactly, and it's all happening in real time, so it feels really interactive. This is blowing my mind. So I'm making these press strokes, yeah. the AI is suggesting prompts, and the editing processor is taking all that in to generate the final edit. What about the user interface? Is this like some crazy complex setup? Nope, and that's the beauty of their third component, the idea collector. Okay, idea collector. Uh, I see a theme here with these names. Right, it's all about making this whole system intuitive and user-friendly. So whether you're a seasoned pro or just starting out, you can jump right in and start creating. So it's not like you're locked into one specific software or anything. Exactly. You're not limited to a single platform. It's all about flexibility. All right. So I'm sold on the concept, but for all our AI researchers and engineers out there, let's get a little more technical. Let's do it. What makes Magic Quill different from other AI-powered editing tools? Well, it's not just about like masking and in-painting, you know, just filling in the blanks. Okay. Your brush strokes are actually creating what they call control conditions, which are kind of like specific instructions for the diffusion model. So each stroke is like a command yeah. telling the AI exactly how to make the edit. Exactly. And they've got different types of brush strokes for different purposes. Like what? So there's a scribble brush for defining the shape uh -huh. and a color brush for applying color changes. So it's like you're sketching out your idea and then painting it in. I like that analogy. 
But how does the AI actually understand those strokes? Yeah. It's not like it's got an art degree. Right. That's where things get really interesting. Lay it on me. They've essentially created a way to translate your brush strokes into data that the AI can process. So it's like they're teaching the AI a new language, the language of brushstroke. Exactly. And it's using that language to communicate with the editing processor. You got it. That's wild. But I have to imagine teaching an AI to understand the abstract meaning behind a human brushstroke. That's going to be a huge challenge, right? Oh, absolutely. It's a really complex problem. But they came up with a clever solution for training that draw and guess AI. All right. So tell me, how did they create AI art school? for this model? Well, they needed to show it tons of examples of how humans use brush strokes. So they built this whole specialized data set for training. Okay, how do they do that? I'm intrigued. They started with images that had really detailed annotations. So these annotations were like labels describing the objects and regions in each image. So it's like having a map of the image with everything clearly labeled. Precisely. Then they took those images and generated what are called edge maps. Essentially, it's highlighting the outlines of all the objects in the image. So now they have these images with clear boundaries around everything. What did they do with that? This is the cool part. They took those edge maps and overlaid them onto AI-generated in-painted regions. Okay, hold on. Walk me through that slowly. Imagine you take an image and remove a part of it. Then you have an AI fill in that gap that's in-painting. Right, like those tools that can remove unwanted objects from photos. Exactly. So they did that. And then they took those edge maps we talked about earlier mm -hmm. and placed them right on top of those AI-filled areas. Oh, I see. So now it looks like someone used a brush to outline the shape of that missing object. You got it. They basically <clears throat> created these simulated brush strokes like a human would have made. That's brilliant. So they used these simulated brush strokes to train the AI on how humans would edit an image. Exactly. And by using a bunch of images and generating a ton of these simulated brush strokes, they built this massive data set to train their model on. That is so clever. So they just fed all that data to a regular AI model, and that was it. Well, not quite. To make the fine-tuning process more efficient, they actually used a technique called LoRa. LoRa, huh. I feel like our engineer listeners will appreciate this detail. Oh, definitely. Yeah. LoRa is a way to adjust a large language model without having to retrain the whole thing from scratch. So it's a shortcut, basically. Mm, yeah. It saves a ton of time and computing power, especially when you're dealing with models that have billions of parameters. Makes sense. Efficiency is always key. So after all that training, how did Magic Quill actually perform? Did it live up to the hype? Well, they did a whole bunch of tests, comparing it to other methods like SmartEdit and BreastNet, and the results were pretty impressive. I'm on the edge of my seat. Tell me more. They found that Magic Quill consistently outperformed these other methods, especially when it came to two key things how accurately the edits align with the user's input, and how well it maintained the original colors of the image. So it's not just a cool idea. It actually works. Right. It actually delivers on the promise of precise, intuitive image editing. I'm loving this. <laughs> but did they only look at the technical side of things? Or did they actually get real people to try it out? Oh, they absolutely did. They ran a user study to see how people interacted with Magic Quill in the real world. Okay, user studies are the best. That's where you really see if a technology is actually usable and intuitive. Exactly. Numbers and metrics can only tell you so much. So what did the users think? Were they as impressed as we are? Well, they had overwhelmingly positive feedback. People found Magic Quill really intuitive and easy to learn, even if they weren't Photoshop experts. I'm sensing a theme here. That ease of use seems to be a big part of what makes Magic Quill so special. Absolutely. And what really blew them away was the accuracy of the draw and guess prompt suggestions. People felt like the AI was actually understanding their intentions. I can imagine that feeling is pretty amazing, having an AI that can anticipate your needs and collaborate with you in real time. It's definitely a game changer. But of course, no system is perfect. Right. There are always limitations and areas for improvement. Exactly. And the researchers were upfront about some of the challenges they encountered. Like what? Fill us in on the not so magical parts. Well, one thing they pointed out is that sometimes there can be a clash between the precision you get with the scribble brush and the overall image generation process. So you might run into situations where you're being super specific with your brush strokes, but the final image doesn't quite match your overall vision. Right. It's about finding that balance between precision and maintaining the coherence of the overall image. That makes sense. 
Anything else? Yeah. They also found a trade-off between achieving really accurate colors and preserving those tiny details in the area you're editing. So sometimes getting the colors just right might mean sacrificing a bit of detail. Exactly. It's a balancing act. And then there's that ambiguity issue we were talking about earlier where simple brush strokes can have multiple meanings. Oh, right. That could definitely lead to some misinterpretations on the AI's part. And it did happen occasionally. But the interesting thing is, the users in the study were pretty forgiving of those errors. So it seems like they understood that the AI was trying its best, even if it didn't always get it perfect. Yeah, they were willing to work with it as a collaborative partner, which I think speaks volumes about the potential of this technology. It's like they were having a conversation with the AI, a visual conversation. I love that. And it highlights how important it is to keep researching this area, to keep improving the AI's ability to understand the nuances of human communication. Whether that communication is through words, brushstrokes, or any other form of expression. Exactly. So where do the creators of Magic Quill see this technology going next? What's on the horizon? I'm eager to hear about it. Well, they've got some exciting plans for the future. Lay them on me. One thing they're working on is adding reference-based editing. So you could use another image as a guide for your edits. Exactly. That would open up a whole new world of possibilities. I can see that being super useful. Like imagine being able to take the style of one image and apply it to another. Exactly. And they're also exploring layered image generation, which would give users even more flexibility and control. Ooh, layered image generation. So you could have different layers, like in Photoshop, and have the AI generate different textures or styles on each layer. You got it. The possibilities are pretty mind-blowing. I'm already picturing all sorts of crazy creative combinations. This is getting me excited. Me too. And it really underscores something crucial about this research. Magiquil isn't just about improving image editing. It's about pushing the boundaries of human-AI interaction in the creative realm. It's about giving people tools to express their visual ideas oh. in a way that feels intuitive and collaborative. I think that's something that would really resonate with our AI research and engineering audience. Absolutely. It's a glimpse into a future where AI empowers creativity rather than replacing it. I love that perspective. Well, this has been an amazing dive into Magiquil so far. It really has. But we've only just scratched the surface. After a quick break, we're going to take a step back and explore the broader implications of this technology. Stay tuned. We're back and ready to keep exploring the world of Magiquil. Before the break, we were talking about how this technology could change the way we approach image editing. Mm -hmm. But I think it goes way beyond that. Oh, yeah, definitely. So let's talk big picture for a minute. What kind of impact do you see Magic Quill having outside of the world of design and photography? Well, one thing that really strikes me yeah. is it has the potential to democratize creativity in a big way. Ooh, I like that. You know, like yeah. imagine yeah. anyone. Yeah. Regardless of their technical skills, being able to bring their visual ideas to life. Right. It's like. It's powerful. It's like putting the power of a professional design studio in everyone's hands. Exactly. I could see this having huge implications for fields like oh, education. Education. Yeah. Education. Yeah. Scientific research even. You name it. It's pretty exciting to think about. Like, let's take the design world for a second. Mm, okay. Imagine a designer is sketching out a rough idea for a logo. Uh -huh. And boom, the AI is instantly generating all these different variations based on their brush strokes. That would be amazing. Right. It could totally revolutionize how design teams collaborate. No more going back and forth with revisions and emails. and Exactly. You could just like paint your feedback right onto the design and have the AI adapt it in real time. That's the dream. That's wild. And then you think about education. Oh, my God. Like, imagine yeah. students using Magic Quill to learn about... Anything. History. Art history science. Instead of just, like, passively reading textbooks. Oh. Yeah, just absorbing information. They're actually creating and experimenting. It's hands-on learning. Exactly. They so just learn. It's making me think about those interactive museums. Yes. Where you can, like, touch things and play with things. And... I'm really engaged with the material. Exactly. I'm already picturing students creating, like, oh, interactive historical timelines or yeah. designing their own 3D models of molecules. That would be so cool. I mean, the possibilities are endless. They really are. And then you think about scientific research. Right. Like, magic will could be a game changer for visualizing complex data sets. Absolutely. Treating 3D models of proteins. Generating animations to explain findings. It could help us understand like- Complicated stuff. Really complicated concepts. Yeah. 
in a way that's more visual and accessible to a wider audience. So it's not just about making pretty pictures. It's about it's about communication, communication, problem solving, yeah. pushing the boundaries of human knowledge. Even. And it all comes back to this idea of yeah. blending human creativity with mm. the power of AI. It's like this beautiful partnership where the AI isn't replacing the artist or the scientist. Right. It's augmenting their abilities, giving them these incredible new tools. Like a superpower. To explore their vision and like push those creative boundaries even further. And for our listeners out there who are deep in the world of AI research and engineering, mm. This paper really offers a glimpse into the future of human AI collaboration. It's a powerful reminder that we're not just building algorithms. Yeah. We're building tools that empower people. Exactly. Tools that can unlock whole new levels of creative expression and problem solving. And that's what makes it so exciting. Absolutely. And speaking of exciting, I'm really curious to hear your thoughts on where the researchers behind MagicWill plan to take this technology next. Oh, they've got some really cool ideas. Okay, well, spill the bones. So one of the things they're working on is adding what they call reference-based editing. Ooh, interesting. What's that? So basically, you could use another image as a guide for your edits. Oh, so like you could take the style of one image and apply it to another. Exactly. Think about the possibilities. Oh my gosh, that would be amazing. I know, right? And they're also exploring this idea of layered image generation. Layered image generation. What's which that? would give users even more flexibility and control over their creations. So kind of like working with layers in Photoshop. Yeah, exactly. But with the added power of AI. So you could have like different layers and have the AI generate different textures or styles on each layer. Exactly. You could create these incredibly complex and nuanced images. That's blowing my mind. I know. It's pretty wild. Like I'm already imagining all these crazy creative combinations. It's really exciting stuff. It is. It is and it really highlights how Magic Quill is more than just an image editing tool. Right. It's a platform for like innovation. Pushing the boundaries of what's possible with AI and creativity. Exactly. And that's yeah. what makes it so fascinating. It's not just about the technology itself. It's about the potential it unlocks. And that's what we need to keep in mind as we develop and explore these new AI tools. It's not just about the why. It's about the why. Exactly. Why are we creating these tools? What impact do we want them to have on the world? Those are the big questions. And Magic Quill is definitely a step in the right direction. I think so, too. Well, this has been an incredible deep dive into the world of Magic Quill. It really has. And for our listeners who want to learn more and see this incredible system in action, We've got links in the show notes. Definitely check it out. It's worth a look. But before we wrap up, I want to get your take on one more thing. Okay, shoot. We've talked about the technical details. We've talked about the potential applications. But what about the big picture? The big picture. Yeah, like what does Magic Will tell us about the future of AI and creativity? Where do you see this all going? Hmm, that's a big question. But a good one. It is a good one. And I think... Magical shows us that the future of AI isn't about replacing human creativity. Mm. It's about amplifying it. It's about giving people the tools they need to express themselves in new and innovative ways. Exactly. And I think that's a really exciting future to be a part of. Me. Me too. Yeah. Well, I think we've covered a lot of ground today. We have. From the nitty gritty technical details to the big picture implications of Magic Will. It's been a journey. It has. And I hope our listeners have enjoyed this deep dive as much as we have. Me too. But for now, it's time to say goodbye. Until next time. Keep exploring, keep experimenting, and keep pushing the boundaries of what's possible with AI. Couldn't have said it better myself. That's a wrap on the deep dive. Thanks for joining us. So where do we go from here? We've talked about Magic Quill changing how we edit images, but it feels like this is just the beginning. It really does. It's got me thinking about the big picture. Yeah. Like, what does Magic Quill tell us about the future of AI and creativity? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? It is. And I think Magic Quill is showing us that the future isn't about AI replacing human creativity. It's about AI amplifying it. Giving people new tools and new ways to express themselves. Exactly. And I think that's a really exciting future to be a part of. I'm with you on that. It's like, instead of feeling the AI, we're learning to partner with it. A collaboration. Yeah. And who knows what incredible things we'll be able to create together. The possibilities are endless. Well, I think we've covered a lot of ground today. We have. Magic well from top to bottom. And I hope our listeners are as excited about this technology as we are. Me too. So to wrap things up, if you want to learn more about Magic Will, see it in action. We've got links in the show notes. Go check it out. It's worth a look. Mm. And until next time, keep exploring, 
keep experimenting, and keep pushing the boundaries of what's possible with AI. That's the spirit. This has been The Deep Dive. Thanks for listening.